So we are continuing our mini-series on living in the way, and we're taking a look at some of the post-resurrection accounts of Jesus with his disciples. And last week we heard from Ben, who unpacked for us the story of the disciples on the road to Emmaus, which is um, a passage in Luke 24 that happens just before what we watched today. And uh, Ben asked us last week, um, how are we helping others to walk with Jesus? And this morning we heard in the Bible passage that the disciples are to be witnesses to Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. If you like, they are to say what they've seen. We, just like those disciples, are also called to be witnesses of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. We witness things all the time. We all see things happen. And some of those things we choose to share with others like the TV series we were really into. I loved Ant and Dec's Saturday Night Takeaway last night. Anybody else enjoy that? Yeah, just a few of us. I'm surprised there was like three hands there, and um, that was it. Um, sometimes we talk about the amazing things we've done at the weekend, like maybe we've been on a really nice walk, or we've eaten out and we've enjoyed some brilliant food. The extroverts amongst us in particular probably spend quite a lot of our time telling other people what we've seen. So this is what I want to talk about this morning. If I can have the first slide up, that would be really helpful. So this is what I'm talking about. Any guesses as to what this phrase is? Harry has a guess. Enroll on Jesus? Very close. I get, I, that's exactly what Ben said this morning. It's my fault for not making it all that well. But the phrase is, encounter the risen Jesus. Ah, oh, there's a slow, like, groan in the room of, oh. So, in the story that we looked at today, the disciples encounter the risen Jesus. And when they do that, it helps them to start to talk about what they have seen happen. And if we want to be a people who desire to grow in saying what we see when it comes to our faith then pursuing encounters with the risen Jesus is what will fuel that desire. To be honest, the disciples weren't very good witnesses when Jesus was alive on earth. In fact, they often did the opposite, and they even tried to turn people away from Jesus. The disciples spent three whole years with him, and in that time, they had front row seats to his miracles. They heard firsthand from him how to pray to his father, they literally had the scriptures from the Old Testament explained to them by the Son of God. And if there was a group of people that you could describe as well-equipped to tell the world that Jesus is alive, it would be this bunch of people. And yet, while Jesus was with them for those three years, they never really quite got it. They never really understood what Jesus was trying to do, and they often got it wrong or missed the point. When Jesus died on the cross... They were even more confused. They actually ended up hiding away, terrified. So how did this group of people become like the catalyst for what we now know today as the greatest eyewitness account in all of history? It's certainly the most well-known eyewitness account in all of history. It's because when this group of followers of Jesus encountered risen Jesus, they couldn't help but say what they see. When they encounter him, as he opened up the scriptures to them, it was like something clicked that they hadn't seen or noticed before. Now, for some people this morning, you might have already been a little bit annoyed that we're using um, pictures in this way to try and get you to think of phrases, because for some of us, our brains just don't work like that. It doesn't click. But for the disciples, there was a moment when they saw the risen Jesus and when he unpacked the scriptures for them, it was like things clicked and they were suddenly able to spot what they hadn't seen before. It was the fuel that propelled them. It's the thing that kick-started them. It's the thing that helped everything else click into place and they began to say what they had seen about the Jesus. Something extraordinary has happened over the last 2,000 years starting from these disciples who we heard about this morning in the room that they were in, they began to say what they'd seen to those around them, who began to say what they'd seen and encountered of the Holy Spirit to those around them. And so it went on like a chain reaction. And now we are sat here on the 14th of April, 
2024, 2,000 years later, because followers of Jesus haven't stopped saying what they've seen and experienced. And so by the Spirit, we encounter the risen Jesus, not as a one-time event like the disciples did where they saw the physical risen Jesus, but we get to have an ongoing relationship each time we pray, come Holy Spirit. So whether you've encountered the risen Jesus for yourself or not, there's an invitation to encounter him afresh this morning. And as we do, we can pray and ask for boldness and courage like those first disciples had to say what we see. In the Bible passage today, Jesus said, the good news is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And I think that gives us three really helpful things to think about. So, The good news that Jesus is alive and has made a way for us to be in relationship with God is for all nations. There's not one person, one people group, one country, or location that is to be missed out. God's love is for everyone. God's forgiveness is for everyone. Jesus' death and resurrection and the news that Jesus is alive is for everyone. And because it's for everyone, we're called to say what we see without saying people's no's for them. The good news that Jesus has risen and you can encounter him by the Spirit is for everyone. It's for all nations. I have so many stories of times when I have said people's no's for them. There have been times where I was too scared of looking silly. Times when I have had a long-standing relationship and it feels like too much of a risk to tell them about the risen Jesus. So I said their no for them. And to be perfectly honest, there have been times where I have just been lazy. But what I have found is that the more consistently and intentionally I've encountered Jesus, the less satisfied I am with saying people's no's for them. Because what I've seen and experienced is available for all people and all nations. So what Jesus asks his disciples to do is to begin in Jerusalem. Proclaiming the good news to all nations is, quite honestly, the biggest task. So Jesus gives us a pointer. He says to his disciples, begin in Jerusalem. That's exactly where they were at the time. So our starting place is exactly where we're currently located. And so God's call on us this morning is to begin in Lincoln, in our family, in our friendship group, our workplace, our school, our sports club. I'm standing here today because so many people around me never stopped saying what they'd seen and experienced about the risen Jesus. And they did it from exactly where they found themselves. My parents talked to me about it at home. My friend from church talked to me about it in the youth group. An LD wire who lived with us when I was a teenager talked to me about her experiences of um, encounters with Jesus when I had difficult questions. An older couple from church invested in me as a young adult and were willing to share their encounters with Jesus with me. When we go on encountering the risen Jesus, we can't help but say what we see. And often it just happens exactly where we are in the normal places we find ourselves. And I am convinced that hearing from others about their small, regular, relatively normal, but consistent encounters with the risen Jesus have significantly transformed and shaped my life. And it can be overwhelming to think about all nations. So concentrate on beginning where you are. We're all going to be somewhere this next week. So turn to the person next to you. Share one place that you know between now and next Sunday that you're going to be. It might be school, might be work, might be the supermarket. Just turn and share one place you know this next week you're going to be. So it sounds like lots of you are going to be all over the place, but you're all going to be somewhere, and wherever you're going to be, that's where you begin.
So God's plan for the continuation of this eyewitness account that began 2,000 years ago, it includes you. It involves choosing to invite people into opportunities where they might encounter the risen Jesus. It means taking the opportunity, like some of our young people did, to invite a friend to church when they were in McDonald's. It might mean mentioning church when someone asks you tomorrow at work on the break what you did at the weekend. That might be an opportunity to share that you came to church. It means inviting your classmate to the next 415. Some of our 915 congregation did that at their nursery school last term. It means extending an invitation to our next Alpha course, which begins in May, to a friend that you've known for years. We are all witnesses about something. The thing that made the disciples effective witnesses to the news that Jesus was alive was an encounter with the risen Jesus. See, we can only say what we've seen and experienced if we've actually experienced it. So I want to invite you to turn to the person next to you. Maybe you want to turn to the other person than you did last time. And the question is this, what difference has Jesus made in your life? And if you're not sure if you know the answer to that question, or if you're not sure if you know Jesus, then try this one. Who do you think Jesus is? What difference has Jesus made in your life? Or if you're not sure of the answer to that question or how you would answer it, who do you think Jesus is? Turn to person next to you. So I don't know how easy or difficult you found that question, but I'd love to invite you to begin to think about putting words to that question. What difference has Jesus made in your life? So this space and opportunity this morning to encounter the risen Jesus by his spirit, the thing that meant that the disciples went out and told others about Jesus wasn't just because he told them to. It was because they had an encounter with him. And so we're going to pray now and invite the Holy Spirit to come and fill us. And so this morning, if you're here and you would love to encounter the risen Jesus by his Holy Spirit, there's opportunity for that. If you've encountered him before, maybe hundreds of times before, there's a fresh opportunity this morning to encounter the risen Jesus. And as we do we can ask for that boldness and confidence that the disciples had to say what we see. So can I invite you to stand where you are?